Export, Yukita was talking about communications. Well, let's continue with that theme because the BBC's international development charity is using media to provide help to communities in Nepal. BBC Media Action has just started a lifeline radio programme there. Dr Catherine Tomlinson is the Asia Regional Director of BBC Media Action. Thanks for being with us. The aid agencies on the ground have been talking in the last 24 hours of, because what Yugita was saying, that communications are, uh, are down, it makes everything much, much more difficult. What is the sort of work that your organisation is actually doing on the ground? So in situations like this, obviously people need, uh, they need shelter, they need food, but also they need to know what to do, so they know how, need to know how to reach that food, to reach that shelter. Uh, even if their houses are standing and they have food supplies, they need to know how to keep themselves and their families safe and alive. So BBC Media Action is working with the BBC Nepali service to produce what we call lifeline programmes. This is information that is life-saving. It helps people understand what to do. And it can be very basic things like don't go back into buildings where there are cracks. Um, make sure you boil your water because it may be more polluted than usual. Um, but it's really... And, and how quickly were you able to get that sort of programming, that sort of advice, out there, on air? We were on air with the BBC Nepali service um, on, in their evening broadcast, so um, about 9pm Nepali time. So I think that's um, probably about nine hours after the earthquake. That was on Saturday, and on Sunday, we, with the Nepali service, uh, BBC Media Action produced a 45-minute programme, and we will be doing that every day this week, and we hope to be doing it for several more weeks to come. There's an obvious difficulty. I mean, these are uh, just some of the, the aid flights and actually getting people out, but we've seen other pictures of uh, so many people, particularly in Kathmandu, deliberately staying out of buildings. So how do they hear all of these messages? Very, very valuable information, but if they can't get access to television and radios because they're out there in the open? Yeah. Well, surprisingly, a lot of people can get access to radios and even TV is still working. We are very, very lucky that Kathmandu is nowhere near as hard hit as it could have been. So there is an internet service, there is a mobile service, there is radio being broadcast and even TV, as far as I understand, is being broadcast. People often listen to the radio on their mobile phones. Uh, you don't need to be indoors to listen to the radio. And so our team has spoken to people who've heard that they are listening to the radio for information. What about the obvious other area, which is, of course, in situations like this, people lose track of other family members and there's that desperate search to find out a if they're okay and and b where they might be what what sort of help do you do in in that particular area, if any um, well, on Saturday, one of the UN agencies asked us whether there was anything we could do to um, collate information about where people were and, and what was happening in that area. So the BBC Nepali Facebook page put out a request for people to say where they were and what the situation was. There are lots and lots of other agencies working in this field and we negotiate with them, we coordinate with them and provide the services that we can. We're not always best placed because we're the BBC Nepali service, BBC Media Direction. We're working on either national or, or local broadcast programs sometimes these need to be the, the tracking services need to be done in a different way but we're coordinating with all the agencies and finding the best way to do that all right Catherine Thompson thanks very much